It's episode 10 of Yuzuru Hanyu is my emergency contact, the Fan You Fan Me podcast. And as we find ourselves rapidly approaching a certain winter sports event that only happens every four years, I think it's the perfect time to focus on something less stressful than jumps, championships, and scores. Instead, this episode will pay homage to Masquerade, the program which first sent the Fan Yus into our dark corners and the incredibly endearing yet tirelessly elusive phenomenon known as Yuzuru Vegu. But before we stop focusing on jumps, championships, and scores, I have to take a moment to give a special shout-out to a certain honorary fan you who deserves his own gold medal for frankness. And that person is Massimiliano Ambessi. <laughs> Things happened this past week, we all know what they were, and we don't need to talk about them. And one of those reasons we don't need to talk about them is because someone has already said everything that needs to be said about those things. And that person is... Massimiliano Ambessi. <laughs> Some people know figure skating, but don't appreciate Yuzu. Some people appreciate yuzu, but don't know figure skating. But sometimes you find a person who knows both, and appreciates both, and isn't afraid to say so. And that person is... Massimiliano Ambessi. <laughs> and on the rarest of occasions, there is a person whose very existence changes your own, and who can send you into a dark corner with a single, well-thought-out gesture. And that person is Yuzuru Hanyu. I love you, Massimiliano, but I know you appreciate giving credit where credit is due, especially if that credit is due to Yuzu, and it so is. Especially during the summer of 2019, when Yuzu first sent the fan news into their dark corners. While I know he had been doing it for years before, I'm not sure it had ever caused quite the mass exodus for the entire fan universe in the same way as Masquerade. Yuzu ran his fingers through his hair and caused a paradigm shift in the fan use. We kicked off a new season of Fantasy on Ice last weekend. It started in Makahari, and yes, I had a soft pretzel. Yuzu is in the shows again this season, obviously, or they wouldn't be on my radar. Trust me, without Yuzu, Fantasy on Ice couldn't be less fantastic. The fan you spent their time leading up to the first show in all the usual ways, hacking into NASA's mainframe to try to stream the shows from Japan for free, posting happy, hysterical, crying cat emojis simply from being momentarily overwhelmed that Yuzu exists, and, of course, speculating on which direction he would comb his hair. That reminds me. There was a magazine released in Japan which explained in great detail, including color-coded directional arrows, how Yuzu styles his hair. Multiple diagrams for each hairstyle variation, several pages long. This wasn't created by a fan you. This was an actual, legit publication which I'm sure sold out instantly. I hate to break it to you, fellas, but you won't be Yuzu, even if you follow the green arrow 26 degrees to the right and the orange arrow 131 degrees to the left. But the Zamboni's almost done, so back to Fantasy on Ice. The show started with the usual group number, which, were it not for Yuzu, you might see at your local ice rink on a Saturday night. I know, I know, there are other Olympic-winning figure skaters in Fantasy on Ice. It's not the same. It was status quo until Yuzu dipped one of the female skaters at the end of the group number. The way the fan news reacted, you would have thought he had sex with her right there in the middle of the ice. It was similar to the reaction to the Haru Yokoi Hydroblade in Fantasy on Ice in the previous year, However, we all know in that case, no girl was needed. Yuzu and the ice made out just fine. There was ample time to recover from Dip on Ice 2019, 
but there would never be enough time to prepare for what came next. Lulled into a, is the stuff these other people are doing actually considered the same sport as Yuzu's? Stupor, it was time for his solo. We had seen pictures from it, and before that we had seen sketches of the costume posted by fan news at the arena, trying to describe and upload the drawings to Twitter as if they were courtroom sketch artists. I think the material is this, and it is this color right here, and it appears to have three layers. Because of course any less would have closed the banks in Sendai for the day. But pictures and descriptions were no substitute for the real thing. The two minutes and 34 seconds of real thing. Before you could say two-time Olympic gold medalist, Yuzu had grabbed the fan news by their Forjoy subscriptions and wasn't about to let go. Ridiculously tailored costume? Check. Hair combed at 26 and 131 degrees? Check. Mismatched gloves? Check, check. Unapologetic masculine smolder? Uh, that's a new box, Yuzu. But check. It was as if he said, screw it. I'm just going to give them exactly what I know they want. Because it didn't stop with the costume, the hair, or the atarashi smolder. That's right, Yuzu. Mess up that perfectly 26 131 hair to bring out your angry cowlick. Slowly lower your hand to your throat while you're spinning, because it just does something for us. Cover your eye like Kaneki does when he's with Hide in the coffee... I can't. It's too beautiful. And at the end, after you've hurled your glove to the ice, simply stand there. Longer than usual. And let us just look at you while you appear to curse in Japanese over how kuyashi you feel about this spectacular performance you just gifted to the universe. It's obvious why you threw your glove at the end. You were throwing down the gauntlet as if to say, I dare you to ask me for more than that. And just in case anyone did, you solidified it with one last running of your fingers through your hair just as the screams started to die down, a stab into your prey that was already dead on the ground. It required zero skating skills, but you still scored a plus five GOE for that unbelievably premeditated hair sweep. Let's keep it real. We know you and Pusan came up with all this one night while sharing a Zunda McFlurry and watching Tokyo Ghoul. The quad axle wasn't enough to keep you busy during the off-season, so you had to develop the perfect package to give us everything we possibly ever could have wanted. And now, we don't know what to do. So... We've done nothing. Well, at least publicly. Given the avalanche of Facebook postings the anticipation of this performance created, there was shockingly little posted after it. This wasn't radio silence. This wasn't Crutch's Yuzu silence. This was, well, there's no word for it. Yuzu overload? Moshikashtara. It's as if each fan you took a sabbatical to handle it in their own individual way, saying, I'm just going to take that two minutes and 34 seconds and go sit over here in this dark corner for a while. We may have needed to start another Shakespearean prayer circle, but this time for a whole other reason. A few fan yous have resurfaced, but the comments are all the same. I can't handle this. Things got eerily quiet. The next day, while the fan news were still not handling this, Yuzu returned to his innocent, quirky self, photo-bombing Plushenko and posing like the sweet Totokonoko next door to sell Fantasy on Ice t-shirts like absolutely nothing had happened the night before. But we hadn't forgotten. And he knows it. You could tell from the look he gave the camera after the parting shot hair sweep. The one proclaiming he has upped his game. I mean, we know he's a competitor. But Yuzu, you will always be in the lead. And it's possible this time you broke the fan news to the point that we'll never be the same. Until you do it again. Since Masquerade, many fan news have taken up permanent residence in a dark corner. Or at least own a timeshare there. If you'd like to send me a letter, 
Address it to FANU number 1114-1207, Dark Corner Northeast, Masquerade Town. I'm currently looking at some Dark Corner property in Blinding Lightsville, but you should see the wait list to get in there. For now, I have to be content with just driving by on the weekends and hanging my head out the car window. But back to the FANU FANMI Prefecture. While both of this episode's posts are at the top of the all-time most read list on fanufanme.com, Yuzuru Vegu charmed the world and holds the honor of taking home the gold medal for the most read post of all time. And not just by a few clicks. No, Yuzuru Vegu won that competition in a 2015-2016 Barcelona Grand Prix final kind of way. He even has his own sticker in the Fan You Fan Me Redbubble shop. A true sign of achievement. Seno. There's nothing quite like Yuzuru Vegu. Who has been interviewed more than Yuzuru Hanyu? I would venture very few people. Who has managed to reveal less information in their interviews than Yuzuru Hanyu? No one. And it is glorious. Before we dive into this wonderful, vague world Yuzu has been expertly cultivating for years, let's get a few things straight. Number one, I am not saying Yuzu lies. Number two, I am not saying Yuzu misleads. And number three, I am not saying Yuzu manipulates. I am talking about Yuzu's mastery of eloquent elusiveness. He listens so thoughtfully. He explains so thoroughly, sometimes to the point of answering one question so prolifically that it ends the press conference in one blow. I imagine interviewers nodding and nodding, feeling like they are getting the scoop of the century. But then, once they get back to their hotel rooms with their recorders, they realize they have unearthed nothing. The 2019 press conference after the unveiling of Yuzu's Olympic monument in Sendai is a perfect example of this. A reporter asks, what is Yuzu's dream? He immediately jumps, triple axles, into speaking about the quad axle. Ah, yes, of course, you can imagine every reporter thinking, but from the very start, he specifies that the quad axle had been his dream. After a bit of explanation, he pauses, repeating the question, and puts on his best, here comes an epiphany, Yuzu thinking face. Not even being in the room, you can still feel every reporter lean in. This is going to be an exclusive. Hanyu Senshu has a new dream. What is it? Coaching? His own brand of earphones? Gasp! Marriage? He smiles the sly Yuzu smile and drops what is bound to be the next newspaper headline around the world. I think my dream right now is to be the first person to land the quad axle cleanly at an official competition. The cameras flash like crazy. Yuzu smiles, nods, and gushes gratifications. Eureka! What a moment in the history of journalism! Wait a minute. Let's recap. Yuzu announced that the quad axle used to be his dream, but now his dream is the quad axle. I love this person. Because this is just one moment in a career's worth of no flash news flashes flawlessly delivered by Yuzu. It appears to have started at a young age. I saw an interview with Yuzu from when he was probably about 16. Granted, given the incredible never-aging Yuzu, it's also possible this interview could have been from last week. In the interview, he is asked if he has any dietary requirements. His answer? I eat when I eat, and I don't eat when I don't. And thus, Yuzuru Vegu was born. One might say it was Yuzuru Vegu's origin, minus the fabric feathers and gold and purple beading. Sometimes he takes the poetic sentence approach. We'll only know next season when next season comes. 
Sometimes he uses the bail method. I decided yesterday, thank you, bye-bye. And if it ever gets dodgy, all he has to do is giggle. It's like the eject button on his interview fighter jet. No matter which system he chooses, the outcome is the same. Seamless extrication. After his free program at Worlds 2021, every fan you was desperate to know if Yuzu was okay. He hadn't looked well. He hadn't looked ready. He hadn't looked Yuzu. Hours of scouring all the social media platforms for any nugget of information. Any confirmation that Yuzu was really all right. And then we finally got all the details from Yuzu himself. Or did we? There were a few small troubles that kept stacking up. Ah, fascinating! We can't wait to hear what those were. Ultimately, I think all those small things... Wait, Yuzu, what small things? Ended up making everything fall apart. Tell us what happened exactly. In my mind, yes, your mind is what we want to be let inside. I'm certain of the cause. Which was? Having said that, what? Having said what? What was said? Was anything said? He's been talking. Something must have been said. And thus, we have moved on. Having hung you, having said, absolutely nothing. Need we say more? <laughs> I sincerely hope that Yuzuru Vegu makes an appearance, or several, at that certain winter sports event next month. Not only is it fascinating to behold, but I also have the secret hope that just once Yuzu would respond to a question with, The quad what? If you enjoyed this week's episode, venture out of your own dark corner and visit FanU Fan Me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Redbubble, home to the Yuzuru Vague Goods, or FanUFanMe.com. As for the next episode, we'll only know the next episode when the next episode comes. <laughs> Until next time, say it with me, Yuzuru Hanyu. The Fan You Fan Me podcast is a Back to the Forest production. Back to the forest? <laughs> um, you know, just kidding. <laughs>